for some, you can go on a bear hunt, have them take you to a bait site there, a bear comes in, you shoot it, it's over. Then again, you can do this on any hunt for that matter. But then you're going to be missing out on so much of what it all entails. Too many times we go for too many shortcuts, and then the outcome doesn't mean what we thought it would. Listen up. When you go on your bear hunt, get into it. Go with the guides, get into the baiting, check out the different sign at the baits, check out the spore, look for any sign of dominant boar bites. You get out of a hunt what you put into it. Travel around, see the countryside, check out the other wildlife, see what the area has to offer. Talk to all the other hunters in camp, see what they're seeing, ask questions. Learn, don't just go back to camp and be a hermit. If you can, go with the other guys when they go and recover a bear, help skin, help trap, be part of the whole picture, and you'll see why we are so excited each and every spring when it comes time for us to bear down one more time. Please remember, no matter what you do, you get out of life what you put into it. So go for it. Let's go bear hunting. This is what I got. Is that a bear or what? Look at the size of this bear! He's a bruiser! Hi, welcome to the Archer's Choice. And if you remember last week, well... <laughs> We kicked her butt. It was all over the place. I got okay. emails, faxes. Okay, okay. It was great. It was okay, so he won one week. We also showed you a bunch of tips last week, and we're going to show you some more this week also. So get ready, because we are bearing down once again. Last week, we shared with you some awesome bear hunting footage, and this week is no different. We're back up and back with Bob Irvin's Wolf Creek Outfitters up in Alberta, Canada. However, this week, we have a very special hunt to share with you. Team Bull on a strong wind, and I put a wild strut on a big bear. And the Vixter, she goes at it once again. One of the most important things that we cannot emphasize enough is shot placement. Shot placement is the most critical thing. You know, a lot of times we can blame our equipment, but the bottom line here is if we don't put the arrow where it's supposed to be, it ain't the equipment's fault, it's ours. McKinsey targets, not only do they make probably some of the best 3D, 3D targets out there, but they have fine, look at this, they make a target for all of us to learn. Not only a bear vitals, but they make the deer vitals too. Check this out. You talk about a learning tool. Here they have all the bone structure, and we can visually see something. Here is your bone. Look at your leg bone. Your knuckle comes here. Then the leg bone continues up here, giving us this hollow gap. When we always think, aim, here's, here's what we always talk about coming up right on the crease. Look at this crease. If we looked on this, which is a very hard thing to see on a bear, especially a black bear, because everything's black, that crease is going up here. Look at this sweet spot right here. But then, as we come up with the shoulder blade, we have all of this bone structure. Folks, you hit them up here, it's a done deal. No matter how much kinetic energy, you're talking about a lot of bone structure. It is tough to come here and penetrate. So, let's take the bear. Split them in half. Are you following me? Split that bear right in half. Boom and boom. If we look at right here, and we are always on the inside, right on there, we are in the bread basket every single time. Every time. Hey, welcome back to the Archer's Choice. You know, I got a real big beef with you. You do? And that is, yeah, because most of the time, like when the ladies, and the guys bring the ladies, it seems like all the ladies, get preference. They like the out the guys they put you in better spots Ralph, than us Ralph, guys. And Ralph, it just isn't they don't, fair. It's but listen, we it's listen, just, listen. they don't give us better spots. We're just better hunters than you guys.
Squirrel bears is a pretty simple process. First of all, once you've skinned your bear, try to put, them, put it down on a piece of big plywood or a sheet of wood, anything to keep the hide from getting real dirty. Stretch him out and don't overstretch him, that's cheating. Take a ruler, measure from the nose to the tail. That's one measurement. From that claw across to that claw. Take those two measurements and average them and that's about what your bear squares. It's that simple. For the past few years, we've been testing out a product that I have to tell you, we have been darn impressed with. And that's nature's own bear scent lures. Let me tell you, you know, in a lot of areas as we're getting more restricted on using certain types of baits or whatever, scent is gonna play a big part in our success. And it's gonna continue on for a long time to come. You've got to look into this bear scent lures because they do work and we've had a lot of proof to prove it. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. You know, this next hunt was just, wow. It's good, good friend of ours, Shawnee Gwynn. You know, to, to share with him the memories and everything, the excitement, it was just eye to eye, on the ground, and folks, this is what hunting is all about.
Friday afternoon in high level Alberta. Ralph and I came out here to uh, possibly film me taking this black bear. I had uh, sat the stand last night and looked uh, mm -hmm. come in and taking the bait bucket from the front of the stand wow. and drug it out about 30 yards behind the bait barrel. We sat there all night long until about 11.30 when I came out. We tried the plan of putting the bait in front of the barrel this afternoon in front of the barrel and have the, uh, the bear come in and present a shot, but it never did. It stayed back again. Ralph and I decided about 3.30 this afternoon to climb down out of the stand and see if we could stalk up on the bear and try to take it that way. We got within about 25 yards or so and it stood up and started walking towards us and presented a broadside shot through a narrow window and I was able to take the bear. Very lucky shot. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Vic, you still haven't done it. You know, it's just, it's sad, but it's true. You just... But, Ralph, I, I just, love my bear hunting. You do. You know, we all do. It's bear hunting is a blast, you know, but I'm still winning. Yeah, but check this out. Backwards. Beautiful. Not a problem on there. <laughs> then he ran. He's right there. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. He went that way because that's where the blood trail went, but I'm going to go this <laughs> way easier. Look at him. He's a beautiful bear. Beautiful coat on him. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Well, he is a beautiful, beautiful bear. He's got a big blaze. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Gosh, he didn't go 20 yards from my shot. I'm shooting a Hoyt bow, Hoyt Hypertech, set at 55 pounds, a beam matrix arrow, <laughs> and an MRP shockwave, which is a mechanical broadhead. You saw what that setup just did. I'm not shooting heavy, heavy poundage. It's not needed. The bill is just slightly cooling away. My arrow went in. Obviously, I'm, I'm guessing it hit the opposite shoulder blade, shoulder bone, because the way he was standing, that arrow came out right away just from the inertia, from the shock of that arrow going through, hitting the other side of that shoulder bone, come right back out. He had instant, instant blood trail right there. I hit him hard and fast. We hope you enjoyed this week's show, and we just want to emphasize that, folks, even though we kid around a lot, she's the best hunting partner I'll ever have. Ditto. And I just want you to remember that I did shoot the bigger bear. Until next week. Same time. Same station. Right here. On the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.